A year has passed already since the big controversy on YouTube regarding that idiot Logan Paul and how he ended up making himself the enemy of an entire country when he went into the so-called suicide forest in Japan and he, he videoed a dead body with his friends. Um, I, I, I had never even heard of this guy, this this idiot clown before this even this, this incident even happened. There have been so many videos of people voicing their opinions about the guy, and uh, don't worry, I'm not going to show a picture of his stupid face. But my motivation to chime in is because I have done a couple of videos of hiking in this forest. Uh, it's It really is a beautiful place. However, I stayed on the trails, and my purpose of taking videos of the forest was to shine a positive light on the forest, while too many others, especially, you know, Logan Paul, they intentionally focused on its gloomy aspects, you know, going around looking for bodies. I've only gone to Aokigahara Jukai Forest, as it's, as it's normally called. I've, I've only gone there to find beauty, not bodies. Yes, people go there to commit suicide, but the same could be said about the Golden Gate Bridge. I do know that people do not just hang themselves on a tree next to the hiking trails. So this this Logan Paul guy, he intentionally went off the trails to purposely look for a dead body. So everybody knows of this incident, but this was only the tip of the iceberg with this loathsome cretin. On the morning news here in Japan, this is a year ago already, uh, they showed the antics of this guy, Logan Paul, in Japan that were even worse than what he did in the, the Jukai Forest. He had uploaded other videos of his trip to Japan in which he behaved like a complete chimpanzee. Logan Paul videoed himself breaking the law, walking in the streets next to cars because he's just too cool for sidewalks, jumping on the backs of trucks, and he was dressed up as Pikachu and throwing a Pokeball at people, and everyone was like, "What? You know, WTF? What? What? What, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing?" Uh, he visited the famous Tsukiji Fish Market, where he bought a fish and an octopus tentacle, and then he went around Tokyo, shoving them in people's faces at department stores and such, pressing them against windows. And then he finally, when he was done with them, he just placed them on the the, the trunk of a capsi, uh, of a taxi cab, and he just walks off. Holy crap! He was also causing problems for being disrespectful at shrines and such, being very rude to the to the, the patrons there who've gone to pray. Uh, I showed these videos to my wife, and she was like, "Why didn't they arrest him?" And all the while he was talking to the camera as though it was like, you know, Japanese people have the problem. And they're the ones who have to deal with his disgusting behavior. And, you know, it was just for for them to, to sort out, not for him. But it didn't stop there. Uh, on, on the same morning TV show uh, that we, I watch here in Japan... Uh, they they show video footage from these these two other guys who I assume they were Americans, who they they videoed themselves walking around Japan mocking the Japanese language, but it it actually sounded more like Vietnamese. It just it just goes to show how stupid they are. And uh, they were bothering store clerks, and they even hoaxed a child kidnapping along the shopping alley. It's just. They, 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 they scared people, you know, they, they just, uh, it, it was a, a kid, I guess it was their family member, and uh, they made it seem like they were just abducting some child, and uh, just startling everybody around them. Their, their infantile behavior was just abysmal. So, I have over 20 years experience with Japan, between either living here or making annual visits, and I'm always sick of seeing foreigners, usually, most of the time they're Americans, I guess, behaving in ways that would get them punched in the face in their own home country. I, I get so many people 
who, who tell me, like on the internet, oh, oh, Greg, you are so lucky to live in Japan. Oh my gosh, I'd love to live there and just lose myself in the culture, yeah, you know, etc. Uh, well, if you feel that way, you would be very angry to see how so many foreigners, foreign people who, who live here, uh, who will actually just crap all over the country here. They just treat the country like crap. And yet they've been here year after year, whereas uh, people who really want to come here they can't. You know, people they they might settle for teaching jobs in in Korea or elsewhere, even though their heart uh, is uh, you know they they want to come to Japan instead. In the previous city I, I taught English in, um, there was another English teacher from America, who he constantly complained about Japan. He was com he completely refused to learn the language or adapt to the culture, so he committed one faux pas after another, which only infuriated the Japanese faculty and staff at his schools, who had to deal with him, and which only made the it it only makes it only made things harder for himself, and this of course caused more problems for him to bitch about. You know, for example, like there was there was this one time when. Uh, the the group of us we were getting a formal tour around the city, to various businesses and such. You know, and that we were asked to you know dress nicely. I kept telling him, take your sunglasses off indoors, take your hands out of your pockets. Be because these are considered extremely rude here in Japan. You just don't do that. And he he just didn't care. Like being an American gave him a free pass. To have the demeanor of a total jackass. Uh, there was another time, our Japanese supervisor got upset with him about something he he said. Uh, that what whatever he, he was doing, it, it was completely not how Japanese people behave. So he got right up in her face and just condescendingly said, "Do you see my face? This is not the face of a Japanese person. I am not Japanese." Oh, such an asshole. I wasn't the only one who was glad when he quit. Now, then, after a year or so, I visited an international church in a nearby city with my family, and that guy was there with his family. Uh, apparently, he was a regular there. I didn't know that, so I never went back. Uh, so, I I know his Twitter account, and uh, judging by what he had posted about a year or so ago. Um, I guess maybe like a year and a half or maybe two years ago, he finally moved back to America. Good riddance. His attitude was that since he was an American, he expected everyone to accommodate him instead of spending an effort on assimilating. The guy was married to a Japanese woman, even, and he could never muster the effort to appreciate and respect his wife's country. You know, my, my wife is Japanese, and I don't... I don't know. I, I, I think she, she may have left me if, if I had behaved the way he did. Hey, he was just such a jackass. So yeah, I, I'm married to a Japanese woman, and uh, we have a child. I am an American living in Japan, and I'm going to say something now that unfortunately is very controversial. So here it goes. Diversity, by itself as a qualitative goal sucks. Diversity is not something that can be prioritized. It must be natural. And it must be genuine. Either it happens or it doesn't. And if you have to try to make it natural, then it's still artificial. You can't make it happen. Diversity will always lead to adversity unless there is harmony. Diversity, just for the sake of diversity, with disregard to social cohesion, will invariably, inevitably, lead to strife. You just can't force diversity on people and expect it to be beneficial. You have to be selective with who you, um, you know, are going to be in inclusive with. So, like, okay, for example, here, here in Japan, I once had some neighbors from China. Um, of course, you know, yeah, that made my, di my, my 
that did make my neighborhood diverse. Just as also you know me living there made my di my uh, my neighborhood diverse. But uh, these Chinese neighbors like they accumulated trash in the back of their their place, you know, their in the back of their apartment. Like they would just put trash out there until it was trash day. And they knew when the trash day was. They were lacking social etiquette because they just didn't care. They just didn't give a crap. And they weren't necessarily intolerable neighbors. But, you know, there you have diversity, right? You know, different cultures have different priorities. It, it just depends on how acclimated you are. And so, with that sort of situation, you know, should I have complained to the landlord? So... The point I'm making is that diversity can neither be good nor bad on its own. But prioritizing diversity is a problem. And by diversity, I'm not talking about skin color. You know, in this case, Chinese people, they have pretty much the same skin tone as Japanese people do. Uh, but, like, liberal politicians the world over, they get so hung up on skin tone... And always throw terms around like, quote, brown people or, quote, people of color. And it, it sounds so derogatory and degrading. I mean, what word should I use to describe my wife's skin color? I mean, my mind isn't preoccupied with, with thinking about that kind of a thing. You know, I, I guess I need a liberal to tell me if I can call her skin tone brown or not because you know apparently nobody says yellow anymore that's not politically correct I, I don't even really say this to anybody so I've never really you know thought much of it until I, I've, I've you know what putting these these thoughts together to do this video so and this is where those who can't ever shut up about diversity they really need to learn how to relax and stop compartmentalizing everyone by their skin tone and genetics and learn to just appreciate people for who they are and how they can contribute positively to society. So, here's something else that is uh, taboo. You know, multiculturalism sucks. Japan isn't popular because it is multicultural. Japan is popular for Japanese culture. I do not want Japan to change its culture to conform to foreign cultures. While I do believe several aspects of Japanese culture have room for improvement, Japan should not be coerced into being more accepting of the more impudent aspects of American behaviors that make me sick and it certainly should not be forced to accept even more volatile cultures in the name of multiculturalism such as the way Europe is being forced to accept Islamic culture that attacks women for not wearing a dehumanizing hijab or yeah, attacks anyone enjoying some alcohol or taking their pet dog for a walk it's ridiculous. You know, you shouldn't have to tolerate intolerance just for the sake of multiculturalism. True multiculturalism is allowing countries to have their own unique culture to share with others. But multiculturalism that is forced upon different societies, it's doomed to bring strife. Multiculturalism is forcing people to accept cultures that they're, they may not be com comfortable with. This is different from interculturalism, which is something I do support. With interculturalism, it's basically sharing one's culture with others. So, I illegally immigrated to Japan seven years ago, and I have permanent residence. I'm not interested in multiculturalism because I want Japan to have its own unique identity. I'm not here to change Japan or to make it more American. A country without its own culture will fall apart. I choose not to surround myself with only English speakers. I don't live in an English-speaking neighborhood, and I feel better off for it. It's called assimilation. 
the dreaded word that the liberals think is so racist. Well, if I'm a xenophobic white supremacist, I'm not doing a good job at it. I don't live in Japan for the sake of making Japan more diverse. I'm not here to bring American uh, America to Japan or uh, you know to change Japanese culture. I'm here because I love J Japanese culture for what it is. For my line of work, I can introduce positive aspects of my culture for educational purposes. This is interculturalism. I've long since established a healthy love-hate relationship with this country, just as I have a love-hate relationship with my own country, my home country of America. I'm here to adapt to Japanese culture as best as I can in the interest of harmony. I've lived in apartments in America where people are too stupid to know how to recycle. You know, they, they throw loud parties late at night and they stand around shouting, I'm so effing drunk. You know, fights in the parking lot and all that sort of crap. I never see that sort of thing here. And it, I, I, I really like it. So, you know, I actually rather prefer living in less populated areas of Japan. You know, I, it, there are certainly no, um, you know, English pre predominant, you know, areas or buildings or neighborhoods or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm totally uh, immersed, right? But whenever I, I visit Tokyo, you know, the, like the store clerks and such, they just assume I can't speak Japanese. And they treat me differently. But where I live, you know, I, I live in a more rural town. Uh, there aren't so many foreigners, and people just treat me like anybody else. Nobody feels like they have to attempt to speak English to me. The clerks at the convenience store, they just ask me if I have a point card, just as they would with anyone else. In Tokyo, however, they don't remind me about my point card, because they just assume I can't understand them. So... It's uh, it's kind of stupid, you know. Or sometimes they might point, just coldly point to signs in English, you know, and they just assume that I can't, you know, they can't just talk to me, and um, I it, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. So uh, there, there is one prevailing attitude here in Japan about diversity that does not sit well with me. Uh, there is such a focus on biracial Japanese children. Or what they 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 call instead they they don't say biracially they say half or hafu, which unintentionally sounds bad. Uh, this focus uh, is such that you know biracial children are lauded about as like becoming like almost like like some ultimate standard of beauty, and everybody just says, oh you know the the the, the you know half Japanese kids are just so beautiful, and well that's not always the case. I have seen some that are just, they're not that pretty. They're not that cute. But, um, uh, it, it reminds me, there was there was this uh, children's book, it was, I'm sorry, a children's clothing catalog here in Japan, in which every single child model in the catalog was mixed race. While I was flipping through this book, this catalog, I was like, well, that, that kid's cute, and so is that one, but... Flipping page after page, it, it became apparent, very apparent, that whoever was making the decisions for that uh, that clothing catalog, they had an agenda. Uh, of course, it was probably with good intentions, but it just made me think, so what, kids who are pure Japanese aren't welcome to be in this stupid catalog? I mean, what's wrong with being racially pure? I do not want to see preferential treatment given to people like my daughter, uh, nor do I want Japanese kids to feel inferior to, to them. That would only breed contempt and adversity. And similarly, I see this unhealthy preoccupation among Japanese women especially to, uh, you know, when, when they use like uh, cosmetic augmentations, like uh, there's these, these things called aipuchi, which are like these adhesives that you, you put in your on your uh, your eye eyelids and it, it, it gives your your eyes like an extra f uh, fold in your eyelid to make your eyes look wider and they're really really unhealthy um, they, they will actually kind of uh, damage women's 
uh, the skin on their their, uh, their eyelids. But you know, it's why do they do this? Is because they've been brainwashed into thinking that they having narrow eyes is not beautiful. Having you know token Asian eyes are, are not beautiful. And I hate seeing people made to feel inferior. Uh, I also similarly I, I also find it unfortunate that uh, so many um, uh, black women they they feel that they must straighten their hair out as though you know they, they they cannot be beautiful the way they are so yeah my daughter is cute but focusing on the aspect of her biracial heritage as though it's something so desirable it really isn't doing her or anybody else any favors a kid just wants to fit in and not stand out and this sort of unspoken favoritism can breed resentment when Japanese girls are made to believe that Caucasian features are preferable, some might resent my daughter for that. It's possible. Uh, you know, some some kids will give my daughter crap, and I I told her that that possibly might be the case. I mean, it's it's not her fault. It's just um, yeah, it's just it's not her fault that uh, people make it seem like mixed race kids are, are somehow superior or preferable at best so okay l let's take a classroom full of Japanese school children okay like there may be some kids who are maybe half Chinese or half Korean or or maybe half Filipino they aren't going to stand out like my daughter will you know, her skin color isn't quite the same as mine you know her complexion is a, a bit different than mine but Japanese people will likely focus on her Caucasian features, while Americans would likely spot her Asian features. You know, okay, well, this is normal. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's just it's to be expected. But So let's say that the classroom next to hers, it, it only has pure Japanese kids. So would that mean that my daughter's class is diverse? while the other class isn't. But now I hope you will see the danger in considering diversity as a qualitative assist assessment and not just simply quantitative. Would you say that the class that has no diversity is somehow lacking and thereby inferior? Uh, that is absurd and unfair. What's important is that the kids get along with each other and respect each other. But let's say that there is a kid or two in my daughter's class that make comments about her being different, and, well, yes, you know, this might happen, this, and it does happen. Would putting more foreign or mixed-race kids in her classroom solve that problem? I don't think so. Now, this might lead to what is known as tribalism, or, in other words, this us versus them mentality. This is very destructive. So in a conservative libertarian point of view, you just play the cards as they lay. But from a liberal progressive point of view, they would see the classroom of kids of only one ethnic background of one only one ethnic background. Um, and they would think, oh, this isn't good, this will have to change. Yeah, they seem to be so hung up on ethnicity and skin tone or whatever. And they just can't seem to get beyond thinking beyond that. And I, I have never heard my daughter tell me, Oh, I wish I had a friend who was also mixed race like me in, in class. Uh, as long as she feels accepted, I don't think she even thinks about that. I do not want anybody here in Japan to parade my daughter around and proclaim that she represents the face of this country's future? Uh, no, I, I, Japan should remain for Japanese people. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being biracial or, you know, multicultural on a personal level. And there's nothing wrong with, na with racial purity either. Well, why is this, why has this become such a taboo thing to say in these days? It's, it's 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 very upsetting. It's very um, yeah, very troubling. 
people just need to appreciate themselves for who they are and not compare themselves to that which they are not and not try to be that which they cannot be. Does, does, that, does that make sense? I mean, it sounds like common sense to me. Uh, and and it's, it's why the people are getting so sick of these days of the uh, batshit insane leftist ideas. And all of this transracial, transgender, trans-disabled, trans-age, trans-species crap is getting out of hand. Like like that guy who made himself physically altered to look Korean, or the, the hypocrisy of, like, you know, uh, like, I've had the experience of listening to some shitlib who exalts the ideas of, of being transgender. And then, like, the same person would, would then, you know, trash weeaboos in another conversation. I mean, if, you know weeaboos, right? I mean, they're the people that, who are, like, Japanese wannabes. They only know of Japan. You know, their only knowledge of Japan is, is, is filtered through anime and manga. And they develop their own vernacular of poorly pronounced Japanese words. So, you know, if you uh, make fun of somebody like that, Really, what's the difference between somebody, you know, like uh, some guy who, who uh, pretends to be a woman? I mean, it's, it's you're, you're just embracing some, some cross-dressing weirdo guy who calls himself some disgusting name like Pussy Fish Basket. Like, I, I've actually, that's, that's somebody who actually has done that. It's, it's just degrading. Or, you know, they, they, they act like an imbecile because they, you know, they, the, the guy thinks that that's, that that's how women are like, and or they they try to act more like a woman than an actual woman does. It's just it's it's. I would find that rather insulting if I was a woman, and to see them competing in women's sports, and beating them all, beating all the women because they're more able-bodied. You know they have the testosterone in their body. They're they're stronger and they're they're you know they're more fit. It's insulting and degrading to actual women not to mention completely disingenuous it's phony and it craps all over true women's achievements you know if I put women's clothing on and claim to identify as a woman when I've never once experienced the pains of birth let alone a menstrual cramp that is such an insult to actual women you know and for the same reason like some some woman thinks oh I know exactly what it's like to be a guy that's, that's, that's bull crap you know x and y chromosomes they're not fascism they're they're science wearing a dress doesn't make a man a woman any more than spending a day in a garage makes him a car so the thing about diversity is that if people think if they if they feel the need to call attention to it then it is not genuine diversity, but it's just, it's artificial diversity. You know, true diversity is when you don't even notice it. Multiculturalism, it's great on a personal level. It's good to be interested in foreign cultures. If that's not your thing, but, you know, then that's fine too. I would not, you know, look down my nose on, on somebody who lives a different life than I do. So, like, like for example, like lately in Japan, I've seen a lot of uh, clothing and home decor with like Navajo designs. You know, I'm not Native American, but I am from Arizona, and when I see this stuff, I, I feel like not only a sense of nostalgia, but a sense of pride and ownership. You know, it's like, hey, this is this is from where I'm from, even though I'm not, uh, you know, a, a, a Navajo. I think it's cool to see that, and uh, I I feel like it's a part of me, like my own culture a bit. If you call that cultural appropriation, you know whatever. But and it just speaks volumes though, about how incredibly deranged leftists are, in this social justice movement across America, and you know it's not only America though; it's in you know England and elsewhere too. You know they. They demand diversity, and yet they scream cultural appropriation when they see some white person wearing dreadlocks or, uh, you know, a white person running a Mexican food stand. They can't have it both ways. 
And this is why they ought to be just disregarded and mocked and not put in the news. Just ignore these idiots. I don't like political correctness because it is essentially an authoritarian destruction of liberty. But and that's, I guess that's a separate issue. But asshats like Logan Paul need to learn that you can't just visit a country and crap all over it with a superiority complex. He came to Japan and acted in an extremely abrasive way towards Japanese people. Technically, that is diversity, right? So, diversity should not be considered a strength. Because when people assign a value to diversity, a qualitative value, they therefore are making judgments of superiority and inferiority, and that is just plain wrong. 